Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Khaldun Azhari. I'm a president of this club, and I have an honor to moderate this event today. Uh, thank you very much for coming and filling this room. Uh, let me introduce our guest speakers first. Uh, uh, to the very right is Mr. Christophe Delor. He is a reporter without borders, uh, secretary general. And this, uh, of course, we all know this organization is, is very much uh, one of the most uh, important organizations in, in the world to protect the uh, rights of journalists in particular. Uh, to his uh, right and uh, in the middle is uh, Dr. Shireen Abadi, the very well-known activist, and uh, uh, she is a Nobel Prize winner in 2003 and it's also she's emirates board member of the reporters without borders and to my very right is mr where xai workaishi workaishi sorry chinese <laughs> language he's also a emirates board member of the reporters without borders they will talk today about the issues of freedom of press uh, in the world and uh, in japan and uh, they will speak all for uh, about half an hour this will be uh, followed by uh, your questions and their answers. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest today. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, so much for welcoming us in Tokyo like this. Really for all of us, for this small Reporters Without Borders delegation, that's really moving, I can swear. I cannot start this press conference without paying a tribute to, to the Chinese writer Liu Xiaobo. Clearly, he has been murdered by lack of care. We can say that the Chinese authorities have murder him, murdered him. China is today one of the most, and probably, probably the most important enemy for press freedom. We have to change China before it changes us, before the, this regime changes our democracies. And if Liu Xiaobo has been murdered like that, it's also due to the weakness of democracies, governments. We do not want this to be repeated with Liu Xiaobo's widow, Liu Xia. We call on the governments of democracies to exercise pressure on the Chinese government so that they really release Liu Xia. She's under house arrest. In fact, she's like in jail. She was never sentenced. She's only guilty to be the widow of a, a very famous hero and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. China is ranked 176 in the World Press Freedom Index, published by Reporters Without Borders. The President Xi Jinping wants the rest of the world to adopt his model. There's a really war on information. He wants, and it's clear since he took office, that he wants a new world media order to be adopted, the Chinese one, and we have to resist it. Just two visuals that the reporters are very provocative. I'm sorry if you are uh, shocked, but that's a very provocative campaign that we run all over the world to show how Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, considers his own citizens and the journalists. And we could say the same for the Russian president, Putin, and democracies have really to resist those guys. Before I leave the floor to share anybody, and I will be back after. I would like to show you a short video about the risks that journalists, no, sorry, uh, I would like to show you a short video about the world such leaders, strong leaders, 
dream of. So I'm sorry for the video we will see later. Dear Madame Ebadi, please. Okay. Can I start? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, sorry, my English. Uh, I suppose uh, to talk to my uh, language. Uh, Farsi, and uh, I bring my Japanese interpreter, but they told me uh, that uh, we should talk only in English. Okay. Um, I think here is Japan, and I need my <coughs> interpreter Japanese. I try to do it uh, myself. Um, it is is not my first time uh, to have a conference here. Um, I had been here. I am honored that I had been here before uh, for another two uh, two times. And uh, the, uh, thanks for help um, freedom of speech in my country because in Iran uh, we have a very strong censorship. And uh, some of our journalists uh, in prison, uh, some of our uh, weblogger in prison, I myself had uh, some client um, who write only a short weblog and they sent to the jail and killed by torture in the prison. But as uh, journalists, um, they are not free in my country, so they cannot talk anything about. And as, um, as here is Japan, I want to you something and uh, ask help us. Um, last week, um, in a, a theater of democracy, uh, in which government uh, show it to a 15 uh, ambassador uh, our government bring them uh, to the prison one of that ambassador is your ambassador Chinese ambassador in Iran and they went to the uh, even prison in Tehran and uh, um, they uh, bring all um, political prisoners the, on that prison uh, to a solidarity prison in another part and uh, um, show um, only uh, two um, rooms that they uh, established before and decorated it only for uh, show uh, to um, to the ambassador and uh, fortunately some of ambassador believe that yes <laughs> our prison is very good but um, I uh, work as a lawyer uh, more than 25 years and uh, I had been in prison myself. And I know what is, uh, goes on in <coughs> on our prison. For example, nowadays, one of my near colleagues, Mr. Sultani, lawyer, he's in prison and received 11 years in prison. And now, is seven years, now he is in prison at, in seven years. And never ambassador should talk to him and show him and, and, and visit him. Please write that that visit in our prison only theater. I don't believe cheat of Iranian government. 
And it is not only Leo Shapo that um, lack of uh, medical care. Many Iranian pres uh, political prisoners, they, uh, they are in the same situation. For example, Hengame Shahidi is a very famous journalist. She's sick and no ambassador <laughs> knows about that and say um, the uh, uh, ambassadors came to uh, Iranian um, TV and uh, say, okay, uh, Iranian prisoner is very good. Uh, congratulations to you. Funny, funny. And uh, another uh, uh, political prisoners who, um, because of lack of um, medical care, is a very bad situation. Nargis Mohammadi, a famous, is a very famous uh, uh, feminist. She's feminist in prison and received 16, one six years in prison. And she's ill. And they don't let her uh, to come out uh, for um, receive some uh, medical care. And on that time, your ambassador, no visit, women part, no visit, uh, political part, only two uh, rooms and take part in uh, the theater of democracy um, which Iranian uh, um, uh, made it. And as um, your colleague, I ask you, please uh, mention uh, that uh, our prison is not, this, is not the same that they visit. Um, sorry for my language, and I um, really uh, thanks for your um, attention. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madame Ibadi, for these very strong words. So now we can have a look on the video about the way some leaders would like the world to be. If you allow me uh, just a few words to present Reporters Without Borders. Um, we are a grassroots organization. We do provide support, concrete support, material support. We provide grants, legal support. We organize digital safety workshops all over the world for journalists on the field. We do also advocate in uh, the international organizations like the UN or toward governments. We requested a meeting with the Prime Minister in Japan, uh, Shinzo Abe. Uh, he didn't answer yes, but uh, this week, sooner this week, we met uh, in Taiwan the President Tsai, for instance, and we do this in a lot of countries. We were created in France and we have our headquarters in, in Paris, but um, and the uh, Please uh, have a look on our offices. But uh, we have now correspondence in 130 countries and offices in 12 cities around the world. The last office has been created for Asia. It's our first Asia office in Taipei late, late um, 
uh, uh, this um, April. I will leave the floor to where Kaishi, but just before I would like to show you a short video about the risks that journalists will take all around the world. Quand je serai grand, je me ferai tabasser par l'armée. Da grande, sarò minacciata di morte. Quando io vorresto, mi vuoi strillare spino. Rahmut Britonis. Voglio essere torturata a morte. Io già ho già scelto di tenere. Vieni e mi vuoi, ma ti sento che ti dici che è. You know where Kaishi, you will see a picture of him. It was in 1989 on Tiananmen Square. And uh, you have this guy in front of your eyes today. Good, af <coughs> good, af good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Konnichiwa, minasan. This is my third time taking a stage in the, this uh, esteemed establishment. Uh, well, the first time I was not too long after that time, and now has been 28 years. Uh, so we don't look the same anymore, but we believe in, a, well, I see uh, some uh, old uh, uh, friends. Uh, when I say old, I mean time, okay. I see some <laughs> old friends in the, in the, in the crowd. Uh, I'm very honored to be here three times in the Foreign Course, Com uh, course uh, Boundaries uh, Club club in Japan, and uh, this time in a slightly different capacity, I'm as here as the Emirate board member of uh, Reporter Without Borders. Uh, there are something common between the humor, a human rights, a democracy fighter, human rights fighter, freedom fighter, and journalist. There are something grandly common in our uh, in our belief. We go to the same church. The church believes in freedom. And then the prayer is tell the truth. That's who we are. And that's who my friend, my mentor, my teacher, my late teacher, Liu Xiaobi, Liu Xiaobo was. And uh, we failed to save him. Chinese government says that he was on medical parole about three weeks before his disease. Three weeks before his disease, the Chinese government decided to tell the world that he is ill. He's very ill. Knowing Chinese government, when I learned that news, Wang Dan and I, we had a telephone call, and then we talked about this and say, you know, I think he's dying. That's what we said on the phone. Uh, Liu Xiaobo is very there to both Wang Dan and myself to talk on the phone to say our teacher is dying. It's not easy. We, he has been the hope for Chinese people. We are counting the days of his emerge from prison. We are counting the days to say there is going to be a a leader in our combat, in our endeavor for freedom. And then that leader is going to again gather the support of Chinese people and maybe again from the world. We did have the support from the world in 1989. I have to say, we're, in the last 28 years, we fell losing that support. We fell betrayed. But then, Chinese democratization is our responsibility nevertheless. We never should have counted anybody else to do it for us. So we wanted, we waited, we wanted Liu Xiaobo came out and then be there and gather that support from Chinese people. And then so we can continue this uphill battle. And betrayed by the world, by the democracies. And then Chinese government murdered 
my teacher. They sentenced him to death, re, and then they called it medical parole. It wasn't medical parole. He was moved to a different cell, and he died in that cell. Although that cell may be uh, constitute in a, in a hospital, but this it's a prison cell nevertheless. Any other way of describing the situation is untrue. It's unfair. And most of the, most of all, it's it's an insult to this to this um, hero that uh, we failed to save. At uh, this time, I want to say that we all failed, Liu Xiaobo one of the greatest, most genuine, most conscientious uh, Chinese person that I know. <coughs> and then I am, when I say we, I mean the world. And then I'm pointing my finger, especially at democratic countries, democracies. Last time I checked, Japan is one of them. So we failed Liu Xiaobo. We shall not fail. We failed to save Liu Xiaobo's life. So he's dead. Let's not fail him again by failing to save his widow. I am going to say, you may, it may sound a little crazy, I think Chinese government want to kill her, too. I think Chinese government wants to kill her, too. The, chi the best outcome for Liu Xiaobo to Chinese government is that he dies in his prison. The best outcome for the Chinese government is that he die in a so-called medical parole. And we see those best outcome has been happening, rolling out to Chinese government. Guess what the best outcome would be for Chinese government about Liu Xia? I warn you, they are going to kill her and Let's not make that happen one more time before our eyes under the broad light so we, f we, ha we have to share more guilt and blame for killing innocent people in China. That's my third time speaking here in FCCJ in this capacity in a very different emotion. And then I thank you so much. As I said, there's a responsibility of the democracies who are so weak, that are so weak. When we have a look on the World Press Freedom Index that we publish every year, and that is a key advocacy tool, we are able to notice that democracies are at a tipping point, unfortunately. And there are more and more countries that were yellow and that become orange, countries that were orange that become red, etc. The colors are more and more dark on this press freedom map. An example of a democracy, or it was a democracy, Turkey. If you had the question three years ago, is there pluralism in this country? Is there a free press? We could have answered, yes, of course. That's not anymore the case. In a few months, the President Erdogan succeeded to put more than 100 journalists in jail, to suppress more than 200 media outlets, to have journalists be fired just for tweets that, criticizes, that criticized him, to cut satellite signals for some TV outlets, etc. Even our own correspondent, Erol Onderolu, is the representative of our organization for 15 years in Turkey. And just for a solidarity campaign for a Kurdish newspaper, he threatened up to 14 years in jail. In Europe, normally a model for democracy, there are very bad evolutions, such as in Poland, where in a few months, the new power succeeded to transform public TV and radio into state 
TV and radio, spreading the propaganda of the authorities. I could say this also for Hungary, also in Europe. In France, there are a lot of violations of editorial independence of newsrooms related to the influence of boardrooms. That's probably a phenomenon that you also know in Japan. I don't have to deal with the United States, now ranked 43rd in the World Press Freedom Index out of 180 countries, where the President Trump sets a very bad example, not only in his own country, but in the rest of the world, and in the world where so many leaders now imitate him, accuse journalists of fake news just when they do not want to, journalists to be able to speak truth to power. In South Korea, closer to Japan, the situation is, uh, became really worse in a few years with the President Park, with the new president the new that has been elected and who used to be a human rights defender, lawyer who created a newspaper. We hope that the situation will improve. Let's come to Japan. Unfortunately, the country has dropped in this World Press Freedom Index. The country was ranked 40, uh, sorry, 53rd in 2013, 61st in 2015, and is now ranked 72 because of measures that have been taken due by the government of Shinzo Abe. We are, of course, like probably as you are, really worried by this new anti-conspiracy law. No, Mr. Abe. Journalism cannot be an enemy of the country. Journalism is a solution for the democracy in Japan, not an enemy. Before, there was this law about the act on the protection of specially designated secrets with possibility of up to 10 years jail sentences for whistleblowers, for sources. There's a lack of editorial independence. You know that better than we do, I'm sure, because of the lack of an independent media regulator, because of political pressure, more and more political pressure. And just to give you an example from overseas, even in foreign countries, when journalists who cover Japan um, say things that the embassies do not like, sometimes the Japanese ambassadors call those journalists to complain, to exercise pressure, even outside of the country. I could deal with the firings of journalists, with uh, the system of the Kisha clubs, which really represents really a discrimination for independent and foreign journalists. And uh, we, do not, we do consider, of course, that the answers that were given to the report published by David Kay, the special rapporteur on the freedom of expression of the UN, were only technical answers and no answers on the level that we could expect. That's to say, answers on principle and on measures that could be taken to improve the situation in Japan. I would like to call to launch two appeals. The first one, we need Japan to improve the implementation of international law on protection of journalists all over the world. A few resolutions have been adopted by the UN. There's now a good international law regarding journalist safety. A concrete mechanism system to implement the international law has to be set up. A lot of democracies joined this campaign. Japan hasn't. South Korea has, for example. And we would like Japan to join other democracies in this campaign in the UN for the establishment of a concrete mechanism to implement the international law on protection of journalists at war or also in uh, non-conflict areas. Second 
call. If democracies remain so weak, we will pay this price. It's a short-term strategy, too short-term strategy, to just consider that human rights are not as important as business. That we can accept the death of Lucia Obo, that we can accept uh, that Lucia, his widow, remains in our arrest. Democracies have to wake up. It's time to wake up. It will be too late when the despotic regimes will have succeeded to impose their own model, what they consider is a model to the rest of the world. My last sentence will be to say that without independent journalism, quality and independent journalism, it's not only democracies that will suffer, but also none of the key challenges for humanity will be solved. It can be climate change, it can be corruption, it can be discriminations, and it can be conflicts, armed conflicts. And uh, I will just finish with a short video about a very special show. And now it's time, folks, to have a parade. just one figure, in 10 years, more than 800 journalists have been killed in the course of their jobs. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Mr. President, for organizing this, uh, and thank you to the whole team of the FCCJ for organizing this press conference. Our pleasure, thank you very much for coming again. I would like to open the floor to your questions and answers. Please raise your hand if you have any question, and proceed to the mic there. And I would like to ask only journalists to uh, ask first, and then we open the floor for others. Please state your name and affiliation first, and ask one question, and uh, precise, please. Thank you. Uh, my, my name is Miyoshi, uh, Yomiuri Shinbun uh, correspondent. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I want to ask about the index of, of your report. Uh, mm, you, uh, I thank you very much for your concern, uh, worry, but uh, don't worry. Japan is a, a democratic and free c country, and uh, I believe that uh, Japanese medias are independent and uh, strong enough to resist uh, interference with, with, uh, by, by the government, uh, if any. And uh, now uh, Japanese uh, medias are very active uh, reporting about sc scandals of uh, Abe uh, government. Uh, so having said that, I want to ask one question. Uh, Mm, your report uh, ranking, uh, ranks uh, Japan uh, uh, 75, but... Uh, 72. Uh, 72. Uh, another uh, uh, NGO uh, in, in, the, in the US, uh, uh, Freedom House, uh, has ranked Japan uh, 12. And I think 12 uh, position is, uh, for, for me, uh, more uh, appropriate. And uh, uh, I think your report is, uh, to some, at, at least to some extent, uh, biased and uh, uh, one-sided. Uh, so, so why do you think uh, there's so, 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 such difference between uh, two organizations? And uh, uh, how, how do you think about my, my opinion? Um, yeah, thank you for, for your question. Uh, I make. I, I may make a, mista a mistake, but I do not think that Freedom House really makes a, 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 an index with ranks of countries. Uh, 
um, we should check, but uh, that's not the case. Um, first, the way we um, establish this index, you, you will find the methodology, I think, in the press releases we, we get, but if you go on our website, you have all the questions, all the, the whole methodology, and uh, we um, gather data on, on the, with respondents all over the world uh, that answer these questions, and that's really transparent and open. If you have, I can understand, that, um, so that's an index not about the quality of the press, but about press freedom. And if you ask an American, should your country be ranked 43rd? Most of the Americans, they say, no, 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 we should be first or second or third. If you ask a French guy, uh, should France be ranked 39? No, that's not possible, we're, we're the best. So I, I'm sorry, but I listen to such um, arguments all, all over the world. And that a ranking is, is a comparison. Of course, Japan is a democracy with a huge level of journalism, and I would like to say how we, we admire the, the powerful newspapers and media outlets in, in Japan. But there are more restrictions and pressures than in other countries. And sometimes, if we compare even with smaller countries, those pressures are, are higher. The law is uh, better in other countries. So. I, I can perfectly understand that you consider that Japan should be ranked uh, better, but if you really have a look on the other countries that come first, I think you will notice that situation is, in fact, better. It's not an appreciation of the work of journalists, of course, not at all. And uh, there are a lot of countries that, that come before Japan with uh, a level of journalism that is lower, but it's just about freedom. Please ask a question short, everybody, thank you. Uh, my name is Hiro Kushida. Uh, they say I'm a right-wing journalist, <laughs> freelance, uh, freelance with Yukan Fuji. Um, I'd like to ask a question, uh, Christopher. Uh, you're not going to deny democracy, don't you? And, and, and you? In other words, you know the secrecy law that you mentioned in Japan passed the Congress. I mean, diet with a you know majority over majority vote, right? But there are you know journalists who are not very happy about that, and they raise their voice outside the diet. Of course, you know, that kind of opinion should be respected. I respect 43rd in America. I'm sure you respect my opinion. Yes, of course. Right? So, uh, my opinion is that the freedom press, uh, just like the Yomiri uh, reporter said, is practiced in Japan. If you, you know, turn on the TV or the, read the newspaper, a lot of articles of, you know, uh, the report about anti-Abe. None of the reporters never put in jail Never killed. They every day they keep keep on producing anti Abe articles and programs. Question, please. So my question is, you are not going to deny freedom of opinion. They, they, you know, they, they, we have a freedom of opinion in Japan. Thank you. Uh, in in fact, the index and the mandate of our organization is not about freedom of opinion. It's not about even free speech. It's about journalistic freedoms. Uh, and you have countries where you cannot be condemned to 10 years jail for content. And the countries that are higher ranking, it's mostly like that. So if you have a look, there are, there are a lot of, uh, I was obliged to, to, to go quickly and I'm Really, we are open to discuss more in depth if you want after on a bilateral basis. But you have a lot of points that set problems in Japan. That's our views. We are perfectly open to uh, mutual discussion. But um, if you compare with other countries, I think yes, there are sometimes problems that shouldn't take a, take um, place in, in Japan. Thanks, very clear. <coughs> My 
My name is Clark, freelance. I have had uh, 60 years experience with media, both in newspapers and in government. And obviously, obviously, uh, one has to support freedom of the press. However, um, there are some exaggerations. For example, uh, in the case of Japan, everyone says Japan is free. Well, people are uh, free to write articles that destroy the character of other people. This happened to me. Sankei Shimbun, half page, totally false, and with no allowance for rebuttal. But anyway, I won't go into that. We're talking about China. Liu Xiaobo. His, his crime is not expressing ideas contrary to the government. It was doing exactly what you said. He was seeking to be a leader of a group which would be opposed to the government. Well, you said it. You, oh, well, he can answer. Yeah. Anyway, he, he can answer later. Yeah. Yes. And you know, I admire him for that. Mm -hmm. But obviously, he's going to be suppressed. Now, that's not uh, suppressing. That's not suppressing freedom of the press. It's suppressing freedom to organise against the government. And we have the same law in Japan now with the the conspiracy law. What I my question. Well, we had. Uh, Mr. Wu, you showed us the picture of yourself standing up with a megaphone with the police behind you. Nobody tried so, to stop you, did they? They did. In fact, we, well, uh, the eventually they did. Yeah. But yeah. No, we had the discussion before, and you agreed with me, that the reporting, the world reporting on uh, Tiananmen was distorted. There is this problem of media behavior when it does misbehave. My question is, how are you going to suggest, what's the, the, when the media does misbehave, what do you suggest uh, your organization should do? Thank you. Uh, just, and I will leave the floor to, to where Keishi. Um, we do not deny, and of course there are exceptions to um, freedom of speech. And in fact, even in the inter international covenant on political and civil rights, there are exceptions that, legitimate exceptions that are listed. You cannot appeal to aid. Uh, you cannot the private life. Um, and what we defend is what we consider is the essence of journalism. It's to reveal things in the, that are in the public interest. Uh, and we do not deny the uh, legitimacy of defamation laws, or even, of course, laws about insults. But related to, to journalism defamation laws. The question is, are they proportionate? And do they establish that you could be tried and condemned if, if you s say something false about somebody? Or and are you allowed to say the truth? And the laws have to improve to help improve journalism so that journalism is, is more factual and more true. Thank you. Can I have, yes, just, I, I feel like um, a little insulting to say the very obvious uh, things. When government um, suppress people, organize people to stand up against the government is obviously a right thing. Saying this to you, to the uh, outstanding ladies and gentlemen in this, uh, in this room, it seems almost like insulting you because that's way too simple. But Clark, you just said, anyone who oppress, uh, who uh, stand up against the government, uh, it would, you, using your word, obviously will be suppressed. You know what, the, when you say that, the first image came to my mind is another Nobel Peace Laureate, Nelson Mandela. That's it. Mm. Sorry, in a government where there is a dictatorship, you will be sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> Obviously, China is a dictatorship. So, in a dictatorship, yes, Nelson Mandela is a perfectly relevant, you know, comparison. So, is suppressing Nelson Mandela, throw him into 28 years, if I remember correctly, 
or 21, 27, or, well, long, long, long years. An obvious thing to do, well, depends on which, whose uh, uh, perspective you are standing on. Well, I find it uh, not so obvious. Uh, thank you. But that's not a question of freedom of the press. That's a question of dictatorship. They're two different things. I answered already. Thank you. Hello, I'm Albert Siegel. I'm a freelance journalist here. Um, now, clearly I'm not Japanese, I'm American. My uh, mother's from Cuba. My grandfather was actually a political prisoner in Cuba. I like to think I have a little idea about, um, you know, what it's like dictatorship and, um, and uh, press freedoms. Uh, I've grown up my whole life hearing all the stories and uh, around people who've recently come from as political prisoners. So, um, you know, my question about this is ma mainly about Japan's drastic fall um, in the press ranking. Uh, as somebody mentioned earlier, uh, Freedom House, they do actually have a list. I looked this up to already. They, uh, as of 2017, Japan was ranked at 27. Uh, World Audit ranks Japan at 30. And I'm a little bit curious why uh, Japan's rating only uh, with Reporter Without Borders is at uh, 72. And uh, it only happened, it only tanked um, after you had a, uh, a uh, representative assigned here who um, has not been without controversy. And that's the, when it started to go down. Now, you, the reasons you list um, for the uh, tanking here are basically uh, the uh, Keisha Club system, the nationalist harassing journalists on social media, self-censorship, and the state's secret law. Well, I mean, the Keisha Club system was around when Japan was at 11. Um, nationalist uh, 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 harass in every single country out there. There's not one that it doesn't happen. Uh, and it's happened well before Japan was ranked at 11. Self-censorship, I think, is more of a cultural thing than it is a uh, government institution. So, um, I mean, the only really new thing here is the uh, state secret law, which um, you based your ranking on a theory on the possible way the law could be misused. Yet, I mean, there's no it's never been done. And you have Estonia ranked at 12, which has a law that allows for the arrest of journalists uh, who reveal sources. And one was actually arrested uh, two years ago uh, for being, uh, who uh, was considered a uh, government uh, propagandist for Russia, whatever. And then you have Spain ranked at 29, which actually has a gag law that allows for and has been used to fine and silence journalists. Six so far have been arrested. And I'm not aware of any such action in Japan. So it generally puzzles me why um, Japan is um, ranked so badly when there are other countries that you look at so favorably, which actually has gone after and intimidated, intimidated journalists. I just don't see this example here. As a foreign journalist, I've never experienced this. Um, I don't see any problem for you to press. Um, I, I'm just really curious. I mean, it Thanks. seems a bit controversial. So, um, Thank you. you. Well, uh, the, the f one sentence here is that... Um, you know, I mean, do you make your um, findings, your research, your paper your surveys uh, available for examination? And, um, you know, considering what I've just said, would you um, look into it again and maybe perhaps re-examine Japan's ranking uh, to see if it um, really is justified, I think? Thank you. Uh, first, well, what, what I suggest is that for, for the next edition, please uh, comment and uh, answer to, to, to the uh, questions, and we will put all of you, if you want, in touch with the head of our index office, uh, and so that you can provide us with your input. You had a first comment on uh, a coincidence. I, I did not really understand. You will tell me after. But I, what I can say uh, is that uh, the setup of this index is totally neutral. We do not take into account anything that has not to do with just the answers to a questionnaire and the data we gather during the whole year. Uh, that's, we do not take into account interests of the organization or diplomatic interests. I don't know what, but really not. Uh, and the second part of your question was uh, about, um, no, sorry, about just uh, the, the, the ranking. What, what? Uh, I, I already uh, answered this question, but you say that uh, as a foreign journalist, you, you consider that the situation is almost perfect. Uh, I hear a lot of 
foreign journalists will say, or, or Japanese journalists who do not have the same version. So um, the way we establish uh, the index is not an opinion poll. It's a, a qualitative method. That's to say we, we consider that the people who answer are specialists, are able to answer questions. It's not just I'm for or against. That's not its principle. Uh, and uh, we try to be as precise as possible. And every year, we, we reconsider the rankings of all the countries. So uh, please provide us with, with data uh, I'm, uh, that I cannot say more today. Thank you. Peter and Lucy. Uh, my name is uh, Langan from Asia Times, based in Hong Kong. Uh, I'd like to ask about Africa, if I may, just to change uh, geography. The big black, black blot, of course, is China. And with the One Belt, One Road um, initiative, which, of course, is primarily economic, as we understand it, but recently there have been reports, particularly in Africa, of Xinhua, the Chinese news service setting up operations and extensive funding being provided by China for journalism operations in, in Africa in particular. Do you have any concerns about this or are you like, like in the sense of an export of that brand of journalism, if you'd call it that, um, into Africa or are you getting any feedback from your people there? Thank you. Thank you for your question. It, it was exactly what I was hinting at uh, when I said about um, the fact that the um, Chinese authorities and some other countries want to, to have the world adopt their model. In Africa, China funds journalism schools. They want new journalists, students, to adopt their views about journalism. Um, one day, uh, I was in Paris in the press club. <laughs> On the screen, there was a city CCTV in French. So through the propaganda media, through the influence of newsrooms, through diplomatic influence also, because if you have a look, for 10 years, there's really a theory, a doctrine of the Chinese authorities about the exportation of this model. Um, Recently, it was one year ago, I think, uh, Xi Jinping visited uh, Xinhua and, and uh, a few official media outlets. And what he said is that really the journalists, the Chinese journalists, had to be the, like the soldiers for his regime. So they really want to influence the world. That's why it's so important that we succeed to influence them before they succeed to influence large parts of the world's thanks to their influence, money, etc. Can I add just one sentence here? Uh, in the textbook of a journalist school in China, in, when I was in university, but that was like, a, of course, decades ago, and it says, uh, the journal, that's in Chinese. Translation into English is news. Journalism is being the ears, eyes, and mouthpiece for the party. That's, uh, that was the uh, textbook definition for journalism in the university journalist school back in the 80s. And then they said, okay, that's 20 some years ago, maybe things must have changed. Everybody keeps saying China must have changed. Yes. In the, in the recent visit Xi Jinping to CCTV, they put on a slogan and say, Yang Shi Xing Dang. CCTV, CCTV's last name is party. That's the translation. So did, did China change? Yes. Much worse, getting worse and worse. That's how, that's how it changes. Yes. For reference, yes. Hi, Lucy Birmingham, freelance journalist and former president. Thank you so much for coming. We're so honored to have you. Um, I have an administrative question for Christophe. I know that your job is, is enormous. You have a lot of things that you're managing. How do you help reporters? What kind of services do you offer reporters? That's number one. And number two, how can we donate to the organization? What's the best way to do that? Thank you for this question. <laughs> um, no, first, what we concretely do on the field, every day, uh, we have an assistance desk. 
they collect the requests of journalists all over the world who want to be supported. They can be in Burundi, in Africa. They can be in Libya, where it's so difficult to be a journalist nowadays without being targeted. It can be in Syria. It can be everywhere. And they request a support. The support can be they need money. They need money to go to a better place where they can be safe and where they can continue their jobs. We have to verify that they are journalists, that they are really threatened, that they really need this to continue their, their work. So we, have, we need this correspondence network to do this. In some countries, they need to flee the country. Uh, they need to uh, be able to get visa to go into Western countries to be safe. Uh, for instance, there's in Paris a house for journalists from all over the world that are in exile, and we provide, uh, we provide them with legal support. We make the request for them to go to Sweden, Germany, elsewhere. Uh, helmet. We provide journalists with helmets and bulletproof jackets, very concrete things. We organize digital safety for workshops. Free? In, sorry? For free? For free. For free, yes. Yes, for free. Um, uh, just, they just have to give it back to us. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> normally it, it comes. We, we, um, we publish, uh, on, I don't know if we have copies, if, if possible we will do this, but uh, we have uh, safety books uh, or handbooks to cover elections, because to cover elections in many countries, that's really dangerous. That we publish in many, many languages, uh, in uh, English, French, Spanish, even Farsi, in Urdu, in other languages. So uh, that's uh, very concrete things and, and that we, we, we run on the field. And regarding your second question, um, it's possible to go on our website. I'm sorry we do not have a website in Japanese. We would like to. But we have many languages. Uh, and uh, please join. Uh, we will be, of course, really glad if, if you want to be part of uh, our uh, advocacy and work and be with us. Become a member. Become a member, yes. Thank you. Everybody can yeah. become a member. Yes, you and you, you first. first. Uh, my name is Kei Yoshikawa, uh, Half Post Japan correspondent. Uh, to translate to Shite Tadak Kirukutu Natone. Sorry. To Mazu Ual Kaishi Sani Simon desu. To Sakune no Rokunatsu ni Otan san, Gaxe, and Tiamon, the Gaxe Shiro Shan, Otan san, Kotira de Kaiken Shatuki ni Kongo Tiamon chicken to Najo no Kotoga, Chugo de Okiru, to Oshati Mashta. The Liu Gyo Hasan and Nakunata, Ima Kongo, Chugo de Daini no Tiamon chicken, and Nakotoga, Okoru to Omoi Maska, Mata, so Yitakoto, Okota Toki ni Ual Kaisan, Dono Yakario, Hatasoto, to Omoi Maska. また日本がえまあ中国の民主化を進めるために何かできることはあると思いますか Uh, he was involved in some student revolution and he said that something similar is going to happen and then um, Tengamon, um, So, so the Okay, good. And then regarding Tiamon, and then do you expect that something similar like a Tiamon accident, like Tiamon uh, incident, is likely to be taken place in China? In that case, what, what is your role? What are you going to take action against? And then what do you think the second question, what is the mission that's Um, carried by Japan to 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 save to 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 democratize to, to, to help the democra democracy in China. Uh, thank you. Good question. Uh, do I expect Tiananmen happen again? Uh, China Chinese regime have been successfully suppressing Chinese people's uh, challenge in the last 28 years. Nevertheless, every year, every year, this figure is available. You can, uh, you can do the fact check that uh, every year there are about 200,000 incidents 
of the, the, the Chinese government call it Qun Ti Shijian, collective mass incident. The Chinese government likes to give it the very uh, obscure names to, uh, to avoid uh, the simple fact, which is protest, okay? So, uh, so 200,000 protests take, take, take place every year. That's fact number one. You're more than welcome to check. It's more widely available. And then the other thing is from 2007 on and on, Chinese government have been spending more uh, on its budget on the so-called Wei Wen, uh, maintaining stability. Uh, that's the, also the transliteration of this obscure term. Uh, uh, then it's military budget. Being in, here in Japan, you got, you, I'm sure you feel the increase of Chinese military budget in, in, in almost on your skin. You can feel that. But let me tell you, Chinese government is spending more money on so-called establishing uh, uh, stability than its uh, military budget. Uh, the, uh, what does maintaining stability mean? Suppression. That's it. So uh, 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 so that's what's the, really the case. Do I expect Tiananmen to happen again? I wouldn't use the word expect, but I would certainly not be suppress, uh, surprised at all if it happens again. The reason it didn't happen in Tiananmen, the reason those 200,000 incidents of protests did not uh, r raise the flag of democracy and freedom in, uh, in, in uh, political uh, uh, slogans, is because there is a fear, uh, uh, like established by June Force massacre, and then also the every years of those suppression in China that make people worry, of course, uh, and then fear is a natural uh, sensation. But also, uh, you have you have also seen in China in history, in many other countries' history, that fear can go away. In the moment of a blink, uh, when something happened that the people realized that uh, no matter how much you try to cooperate with the government to avoid that uh, the worst case happened to you, it would happen nevertheless. I'm sure you have heard uh, the term to say China is different. And Chinese gov uh, people say that, Chinese government say that. But I'm also sure you have heard Arab is different. And one vendor this, uh, uh, suicide in Tunis, Tunisia uh, triggered a revolution. How different would that be? The feeling, the hunger, the call for freedom is very universal. And then, uh, uh, when with, would I do I expect there something happen? I wouldn't use the expect, but I certainly uh, pay a close attention when something. Like that happened, I believe that's your, also your question. Do I, uh, uh, do I jump in? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I cannot give you any concrete uh, answer or concrete plan what to do because I don't know the precondition. Uh, but Liu Xiaobo in 1989 was in the United States because he was fear of his personal safety. He was uh, suggested and he went to the United States. When Tiananmen student, move, uh, uh, Tiananmen student Movement took place, he bought his fir you know, first available airplane ticket to fly back to Beijing. I am in exile. Uh, I, d I have been denied going to China. Don't know if I can be able to purchase an airplane landed in China, but you know, uh, I, will, I will do my best to go back to China. And the question in, in, in your, the second question, what can Japan do? I think, even being foreign correspondents, but no, you are a local uh, newspaper, Japanese, uh, Japanese, uh, course, uh, uh, journalism, journalist. Uh, you, you can, I can. It's even more appropriate uh, to talk to you about this. Japan is certainly not a small country. Of course, right? I mean, the, the lot of debate happened here. It's like, how can the Japan rank in the index so low? It's about this. It's a big democracy. Uh, what, uh, I mean, the land size, the, 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 the uh, GDP, the, uh, all these things. Japan is not a small country. Act like a big one. And when there is a, when there is, when <laughs> Japan can be the first line of defending Chinese, excreping its idea to the world. But Japan has acted after Tiananmen 
uh, massacre, one of the first Western country to reestablish its relation with, with China. If Japanese people think the world is not giving Japan a fair uh, uh, salute uh, for its accomplishment, act like a big democracy. And this is your opportunity. Thanks. Last question, please make it short. Mm. We, we extended the session. Uh, I won't be expressing my view because some people already expressed in the past. So I'll just ask you the question. Uh, you are talking about freedom of uh, press. What about the responsibility? What are, well, how do you uh, relate the responsibility of the reporters? How reliable? Because I think um, in some of the uh, public opinions everywhere, even here, we don't uh, trust newspapers. We don't trust the reporters. So we, you, if you want freedom, you also need the responsibility with that. How do you define what do uh, what are you going to do with that? I probably perfectly share your view. Um, the, the, the objective of journalists cannot be just to catch, to capt, to capture audience. It is to inspire trust and to deserve this trust. And we are in a period where, thanks to the technological channels, it's so easy to spread propaganda, so cost efficient, I would say, um, to spread remorse. That what we need to defend is, I use this expression, the essence of journalism. In many countries, there are journalists that are really bad guys. You are not a good guy because you are a journalist. In, in Turkey nowadays, the vast majority of journalists are just are slaves of Erdogan. And some of them want to be that. Um, and they denounce the journalists who try to do their jobs and that are in jail. So what we have to do, and I think that's an international fight. That's not a national country by country fight. It's to defend a conception of news and information that is based on three principles, verification methods, ethics rules, integrity rules, and editorial independence. I will finish with a very um, I have in my office in Paris a letter that, I be, that has been sent to me by Margareta Simonian. She's the head of Russia Today and Sputnik. And she says, she sent it just after the European Parliament adopted a resolution on propaganda media, targeting Russian propaganda media. And as you know, Russia Today sometimes are interesting news, but it's under the control of the Kremlin. You cannot say that's free and independent journalism at all. And she says, you must defend us. You must defend what we do, abiding by the Article 19 of the Human Rights Declaration, the Article 19 of the International Covenant on Political and Civil Rights, etc. That's the challenge of our times, is that today, even the enemies of independent and free journalism, sometimes they use the same international norms or references. So we have to set up, I think, really standards for this, for journalism to be able to distinguish propaganda from journalism worthy of this name, or at least to improve the whole field of information. Thank just you. a word, if you allow, I would like to just to introduce Cédric Alviani, who is the head of our office in Taipei. We established his office in Taipei also to be closer to you. So please uh, contact him uh, if you want. And I would like just to finish with a joke. Uh, if we would put another question in our questionnaire for the World Press Freedom Index, and if the question would be, do the journalists of this country ask tough questions, the answer would be yes for Japan. <laughs>
Thank you very much. We still have some attention, so I would like to take the opportunity of having Dr. Abadi here. I would like to ask you a question, please. Uh, how do you see the, the, the freedom of press after the so-called Arab Spring in the Middle East? I'm sure you are expert about that uh, region of the world. Uh, and, you know, the governments, they, there, they say it's a conspiracy. All of these Arab Spring uh, demonstrations is conspiracy from the West to destroy the countries. So what do you think the, the situation is now after uh, all of these uh, countries now having some wars and uh, crisis? Thank you. Uh, uh, you want uh, I talk about Iran? Uh, the Middle East. Mi mi Middle East. Middle East. Not, not specific country. At first, I must uh, tell that uh, Iran mm, has interviewed to uh, many countries uh, like Syria, uh, Yemen, uh, Lebanon, Iraq. And at the beginning of the spring um, Arab in Syria, uh, Iran uh, sent many money, arms, and um, uh, military uh, to the Syria uh, supporting Bashar Assad. Um, and uh, in, including Iran uh, give some money to Afghani, uh, to Afghan people who live in Iran, uh, go to the uh, Syria uh, fighting uh, for Assad. And um, then uh, sent uh, money and, mil and uh, weapon uh, to Husi in Yemen and caused um, internal war in Yemen. And uh, the, the all Hezbollah, uh, uh, all um, needs Hezbollah from weapon uh, and anything uh, comes in the Iranian money. Uh, the, so, um, Middle East uh, has a, uh, involved in a very bad war, um, a proxy war, <coughs> proxy. Proxy. proxy war, proxy war, um, inside of uh, one side Iran, another side Arabi, Saudi Arabi. And um, America and Israel help um, Arab, Saudi, and uh, Russia help Iran. And uh, unfortunately, day by day uh, is worse uh, because of the war in Iran and you, uh, because of war in uh, Middle East. And you know, when there is a war, no uh, freedom, uh, no freedom of speech, and um, some journalists uh, um, uh, arrested by Bashar, and um, then ISIS, and uh, some of them killed, and uh, uh, okay, thank you. Okay. We, we still have some people on task. Do you have time, or it's okay? okay. Yeah. All right, uh, these two gentlemen, please come and ask you questions, and then they will answer. Please come together. Just to save time. Thank you for accepting to extend the time. Yeah, my, my name is Yamashita, and uh, I'm a pro professor emeritus at Osaka City University. And uh, and uh, reporters without borders uh, ranking for Japan in 2010 was tense. Uh, Yes, uh, but uh, after that, plummeted. In the now is uh, seventy. 
second. But uh, why, why? So, and uh, your ranking for Japan promoted after the beginning of the Abe, Abe, Abe administration in 2012, obviously. But the uh, situation has not been changed at all in Japan, freedom of speech in Japan. So why? So it seems to me it, it's reflect your prejudice about the Prime Minister Abe. So you, you may have a prejudice, uh, Prime Minister Abe is a nationalist? No, but he, he is, he's not a nationalist, but just a patriot. It's like a Emmanuel Macron or Angela Merkel. And uh, it, it's, it's much less than, much less nationalistic than the US president. Thank you. Uh, that, no, no. Uh, we have only question, no, please. No time. No, Just don't, a question, don't. please. What's your question? And, uh, I, and I have a uh, World Bank's global governance indicators. It, it contains uh, 11 indicators, including your ranking and the freedom of health. But your, your, your movement, uh, chronicle movement of index is very eccentric. Only you, you, your index is, is very eccentric. The problem met it. So it's a very unusual, very eccentric. Thank you. And uh, I don't believe it's, it's very unreliable. Uh, that's not really a question, that's a criticism, that's your right to, to uh, yes, of course, I, 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 um, uh, I guess I, I, I try to answer this, this question. I just, I would just add, this index is not um, an evaluation of prime ministers, of how nationalized they are or are not, uh, that's just about press freedom, and that's related to a few criteria. We are really open, and we discussed in other countries our index with uh, university teachers uh, about the criteria, the questions, uh, the ways people answer the questions. Please contact our office, we are really ready to discuss with you. Thank you. L please make it very short. Uh, my name is Moteki, uh, a professional associate. Uh, another uh, question about the index. <laughs> uh, I personally uh, think that Japan is the uh, freest country as, uh, in the world as to uh, freedom of e expression. Uh, rather, may, no restriction on uh, expression, so media rather abused that uh, well, uh, benefit in favor of anti-government, not uh, uh, well, uh, in favor of government. Uh, there is a clear... Question. Question. There is question, a, uh, yeah. question, But the question, related to question, uh, very clear evidence is there. Uh, 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 pri uh, private uh, organi organization, viewers and uh, listeners for legal compliance in broadcasting made a survey. Uh, how uh, TV uh, spent time uh, on the issue of uh, national security related laws. And the result is here. Uh, they spent 89% for the uh, opinion uh, of uh, well, uh, rejection of that law. This is not uh, uh, poll. Rather, they spent 89% uh, uh, who are against uh, uh, in their uh, well, uh, broadcasting. Excuse me, what's the question? Okay, okay. We have no time, okay, please. Okay. What's so, your question? Uh, okay. The, such a, well, free uh, situation is Japanese, uh, well, media. So, uh, why uh, Japan is ranked 72? Thank you. Uh, for example. Thank you, it's okay, thank the, you. Make the, thank well, you very make much. the question sir. simple. Only one question. Well, I haven't, uh, no, I, I don't know. Uh, there, there have been, well, 
uh, expression case a case of single case of well suppression of expression or of course uh, uh, prison uh, 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 well uh, pr prison retaining or su such okay. a case. Okay, uh, thank but, you. But if you know one no, single uh, case, okay, uh, that's uh, it. Let yeah. me know. I, I, I perfectly you respect your own opinion, your personal opinion, but... No, 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 no question. I, I, uh, uh, may I answer I your know, question? No, 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 please tell me, there is only single well, case of no. such... Well, yes. Uh, yes. 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 Excuse me. May, may I answer your question? Um, uh, no. uh, yes, thank you. Um, traditionally, the best countries in the World Press Freedom Index are Nordic countries, Northern European countries, Finland, <coughs> Norway, Sweden, sometimes Netherlands, etc. Uh, last year in Finland, for the first time, the Prime Minister called the public TV to try to exercise pressure so that they do not broadcast an investigation about a case about him. Finland is not first anymore. So if you have a look on other countries, on, uh, there are many countries where there are really a few pressure on journalists. Where really, if you have a look at the laws, they are really good. And of course, I perfectly understand. I would be Japanese, I would consider 72, that's not there are so good, and um, that's really true, so good journalists in this country, etc. But please have a look and investigate on other countries. And I'm sure that we, if you go to Finland, if you go to Sweden, uh, you will come back and consider, oh yes, there are countries where there are best practices. That's not a judgment about Japan itself, really not. Thank you. I'm, I'm really, thank you for your, all your questions. Thank you very much. This wraps up our event today. リランスのテラサユですけどあの安倍首相や日本の政府関係者に会うよってあるんですかでもあの私言ってるんですけどあの私言ってるんですけどあの私言ってるんですけどあの私言ってるんですけどあの私言ってるんですけどあの私言って